today I'm answering your doll making questions from my Instagram page and here on the YouTube community tab. If you just found me, my name's Jo and I make butternight cloth art dolls on a narrowboat in Wales. I've tried to pick out some questions that I haven't answered before. I'll put a link up to the other Q&A videos I've done at the end. Today, the first question we have is, what was the first doll you ever made and what inspired you to make it? I think the first doll I ever made was years before I started making them seriously. I made a little knitted doll from scraps of yarn when one of my daughters was a baby. I wasn't very good at knitting clothes but I wanted to make something for her so I made a doll. I think it had yellow hair and a black dress. I don't think it was very good but she didn't seem to mind. Then when she was in her teens my daughter gave me the idea of making gothic style cloth dolls. Twelve years later I'm still making them and it's now my full time job which is a dream come true. Out of all the dolls that you've created which is your favourite? Ooh, that's a hard question. I've made so many. Uh, one project that comes to mind is a gothic bride and groom set that I made for one of my regular customers maybe three or four years ago just because they were so much fun to make. My customer wanted the dolls to be on display at the wedding reception. Her husband-to-be had no idea he was being immortalised in doll form. She secretly sent me photos of their outfits so I could copy them. I remember they were quite a challenge at the time. There were lots of little details to get right, lots of colours and textures and little accessories. But I had a lot of fun putting it all together. My style has moved on a lot since then and it's too easy to look back at my older work and think of things I'd do differently now but I was so proud of how they turned out and I was honoured to be part of their special day. If you were to ask me to make something like that now, I don't think I could do it. Because I'm working from the boat these days, I don't have the space to have ongoing projects lying around with glue drying on various bits. I don't do commissions at all now. I'm enjoying having the space to develop my skills and designs in my own time. That pair of dolls will always be a little bit special though. How do you make the head? The way I make my doll's heads at the moment is basically two flat pieces of fabric sewn together front and back. I cut a little hole in the back and use that to insert the stuffing then stitch the neck through the same hole. I'll put a link up on the screen to a video that shows how I do it. I'll finish watching this one first though then go have a look at that one. I would like to change the design I use for the head when I get time to play around with it properly and add a hidden button joint so the head can be turned from side to side. When I do get round to that, that will be a video on its own. By the way, if you want to make sure you don't miss any new videos when they come out, please give this one a like and let YouTube know you're enjoying it. If you tap the little bell down there you can get notifications too. I'll usually put a post up a week or two before I make a Q&A video so if you have a question that isn't answered this time you'll have chance to ask it for the next one. Okay back to your questions. Would you ever make a tutorial on how to make the basic build of the doll? I don't have any plans for a full tutorial at the moment. I don't really work to exact patterns and I tend to make things up as I go so I think I think it would be difficult to put a tutorial or a pattern together. Right now I am building up a library of 5-10 to 10 minute videos with tips for each stage of the process. My focus for this channel is to give you the inspiration and the skills you need to start exploring doll making rather than learning to make one specific doll. So your dolls are evidently made for an adult customer base but I can tell you put a lot of work into making them sturdy and nice to the touch. So are they able to be played with? What's the thought process behind that? What's the demographic you had in mind when designing them? The dolls I make now are most definitely for adults rather than children. When I started making dolls I spent a lot of time in social media groups talking not just to doll makers but also to doll collectors. I found that what those collectors wanted was a quality product made with a lot of love and care. They wanted something that could interact with its environment and with the other dolls in their collection. Dolls that could be gently handled and posed in a natural position rather than stiffly standing like soldiers on a shelf. I think this is why ball jointed dolls are so popular with collectors. Bead jointed cloth dolls are a more affordable alternative to ceramic ball jointed dolls. 
but they still need to be handled gently, kept clean and not pulled or thrown around. If I was to sell toy dolls for children, the safety laws here in the UK are quite strict, so I'd have to do a lot of safety testing, like setting fire to a doll, pulling it apart and things like that. Then I'd have to make every doll the exact same way. That's not a road I really wanted to go down, so to be clear, every listing states that they're not toys and they're for collectors over the age of 14. Have you ever thought of doing a collab with another artist? That's not something I've ever really thought about. I'm not sure how collaborations between doll artists work. If anyone's done something like that, let me know in the comments. How did it work out? I never say never, I guess. I would definitely consider a video collab with another artist on YouTube at some point. I think that'd be fun. Any tips on how to start making bead jointed fabric dolls? Watch my videos. Seriously though, um, watch as many doll making videos as you can. Doll makers all have their own experiences and their own way of doing things. I still learn new things from watching other artists. Also, the Susanna Orion books are full of info that will help you get started. These two books are great. I'll put some links to them in the description. Check out my other Q&A videos here for answers to more of your doll making questions and I'll see you next time. Bye.